We do want to bring in now Tracy Walder, News Nation contributor and former CIA officer and FBI special agent. Tracy, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Natasha. So, Tracy, we're just talking about this. The shooter had no criminal history before he killed three people yesterday, but he had been involuntarily detained for mental health reasons. Help us understand how he still was able to legally obtain firearms. Well, I'm not certain it was how he obtained them, whether it was legal or not, but my best guess is, is he's 21 years old right now. When the Baker Act, which is what was used to involuntarily commit him, was used, he was most likely a minor since that was done in 2017, making him, what, 15 or 16 years old. I do not know the depth of a background check that would have been done on him if he had obtained them legally. And if they hadn't gone into his juvenile records, they most likely would not have seen that. Now, if this had happened when he was an adult, then yes, that would have precluded him from buying a weapon. So it's unclear to me how far back they went because typically juvenile records are sealed. Okay, and we have heard that report that there were racist drawings on the guns, a swastika dr uh, drawn with a pen. How common is something like this in racially motivated attacks in particular? Have you seen this before? And from a legal standpoint, how much weight does it add to the claim that this was a hate crime? Well, I think it adds a tremendous amount of, of weight to the fact that this was a hate crime. I mean, we have to be careful because being a white supremacist is not a mental illness. It's a crime, period, the end. You cannot engage in this type of targeted behavior. Um, there's a fine line between free speech and hate speech. And I would imagine his manifesto also will weigh very, very heavily, although I haven't seen it. But in terms of his his motivating factors for doing this, I think it will be become very clear in terms of who he targeted, the sites that he visited, the imagery that was on his gun, um, as well as the manifesto that this will be investigated as a targeted hate crime. Yeah, and, and the suspect does appear to have targeted his victims because of their race. And you told our team that this reminded you of an investigation that you were a part of. Can you speak to that? Sure. My actually very last arrest as an FBI agent um, in Southern California, um, it was an individual who was engaging in behavior that was similar. He had gone to a college that had a, a large amount, a large presence of historically black sororities on them and was leaving nooses um, in their mailboxes um, as well as on their doorsteps. And he was also threatening to kill them online. Um, we then obviously went with the warrant uh, to his home. He was also about 19, 20 years old, so very similar in age. But the thing that was very surprising to me is he too was also living with his parents. And it was a seemingly, I guess we can say normal looking home. But once we went into his room, which he also always kept the door locked, and this was the case in, in this particular case as well, um, the amount of Nazi paraphernalia that was all over his room, covering the walls, covering the ceiling, covering the doors, was very, very shocking to me. And it was very surprising that someone living under a seemingly normal roof um, was engaging in this kind of behavior. In your view, in this case, were there enough warning signs that someone, either law enforcement or his family members, should have expected him to potentially turn violent? That's a hard thing to say because as a parent, um, I don't want to just completely blame parents. But at the same time, you know, when I had gone into that home, it was very hard for me to believe that this mom didn't know that her son was clearly engaging in this kind of behavior. She felt that it was just a phase um, when I asked her. So we have, you know, we have to be careful. One of the things that I did see in terms of a breakdown of law enforcement is that campus security at Edwards Waters University did a fantastic job. They actually notified a, a sheriff's deputy that this suspicious person had been on their campus. Where the breakdown happened was that sheriff's deputy did not notify dispatch or 911. And that probably would have been very helpful in this case since they had to make the model, the license plate of the vehicle that he was driving. Okay, that is an important note. And I always appreciate the context and time. Tracy Walder, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.